and you will receive. When I heard that, my mind got confused. I'd be like, no, I have had success in businesses. I had my first business in Standard 3 when I was selling pop pots. Standard 6, I had, I had three people selling sweets for me. When I was in uh, varsity, I had four tuck shops employing eight, eight people. How can this be true when me and I don't in all the experience? There are certain things that I started that I failed. But this verse says, give and you receive. But I remember that earlier in the Bible, in Genesis 1, verse 1, there's a verse that talks about bearing fruits with seed in it according to their kinds. According to their kinds. So it, it means that if you are doing something that is in line with who you are, failure won't touch you. Are you going to be disappointed? Yes. Are you going to face challenges? Yes. Are you going to come to a point where you want to do something, you plan something, it never happens? Yes. But there is nothing as great as not reaching your goal while in your purpose. Not reaching your goal while in your purpose. Because that becomes a learning phase rather than a hindrance or a blockage of who you are. So the knowledge of the type of seed is more critical than knowing what type of fruit the seed is going to bear. Unfortunately, most of us are seeds, but we have not taken time to understand what type of a seed we are. Simply means that we don't know when to plant ourselves. When, when we have this seed and you look at a banana and, 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 and it's going from green to brown to yellow, you say, why am I not going that color? But maybe you are not supposed to be like a banana. Maybe you are able. So the knowledge of self is more critical than knowing the output. Most of us tend to say, I want to do this, I want to achieve this, I want to have a car, I want to have a job, I want to have a business. Good, I agree with you. But do you know who you are? If you don't know who you are, you're going to have trouble in terms of understanding the process from where you are now to where you want to be. I know your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. <laughs> and told you that you're going to be this unbelievable success. I just want to tell you that in your way to becoming this unbelievable success, you will fail at something at some time. So you therefore need to have a system, a plan, a way of putting through your idea through certain um, criteria, should I say, that will help you determine whether I should pursue this as a business or maybe it's just a great idea. If you can't be in front of clients selling every single day your particular business, then perhaps business is not for you because that's all we ever do as entrepreneurs is sell. People complain about raising money, uh, and they talk about access to finance. I like to tell people that, you know, there's a sure way of raising money. Go and buy a product for five rand. Sell it for eight rand. You've just raised yourself three rand. You do that a million times, you raise yourself three million, right? Yet we have a mentality of waiting for somebody to give us this finance as if we're due it. So if there's one consistency about business, if you are in business, if you believe you're an entrepreneur like this series is called, if you can't sell, if you don't sell, if you don't enjoy the pleasure of closing a sale, perhaps this is not for you. And I really don't think you should dedicate yourself into entrepreneurship if you're uncomfortable with selling. And when I, by selling, I don't even mean your product, I mean yourself, I mean your country, I mean many other things that go with owning a business. How great your idea is, no matter whether or not you got that award letter for the contract, if you don't have cash, cash, you are not going to be very successful. So please protect your cash. The thing that gets us by most of the time, particularly in difficult times in business, which trust me there will be many is, at least for me, passion. So even at the point of choosing the business that you want to pursue, I'd like to advise you to consider something that you are particularly passionate about. Because you see, you're gonna need that drive to wake up on that cold morning when everything in you, your body, the weather, life, your bank balance, says to you, just stay in bed and pretend like it's gonna be okay. You need something else that's going to make you get out of bed and get going. And often, the passion for whatever your business is, is what drives people. So big business is not what 
grows economies. Lots of small businesses grow economies. Business is no different. It's run by human beings. It's run by individuals. It's run by you and I. And we are complete human beings. We have emotions. We have needs. We have wants. We need to be able to develop ourselves to be the best leaders. Certainly our aim and our love job and why we take the time to do these kind of things around the country is to try and inspire as many of us as possible. For any other reason than to make money, or make a terrible mistake. Because business is about making money. It's not about any social considerations. And I think that's a mistake that I see a lot of our people actually tend to make. Where they think you're going to business because black people are going to support you. You'll be making a terrible, terrible mistake. Businesses is about goods and services that someone requires and can really make a difference in that person's life. You see companies every day advertising the papers looking for commission sales reps. So when I buy papers every day, I don't really just really look at things that are not important. What's important for me is how can I make money? So companies advertise, do you want to make a million rents a month? Do you want to sign your own check? That's when I raise my hand. And all of a sudden, one day get an opportunity um, to sell this hair product. It's a company uh, in the papers advertised they're looking for, for a sales rep. Contacted them and uh, got an opportunity. Started selling this hair product, brand called Supercell. I sold Supercell and really put it in the map, sold it for 19 months. In January of 1985, started producing Black Lack Me. The first invoice for Black Lack Me was made on the 14th of February 1985. To just indicate the success of our business from inception, very lucky. Just happened to really be in the right place at the right time. That we, I managed to pay all, repay Alter's loan of 30000 I had three years to repay it. I paid it back in seven months.